Hello everybody. Today I want to take a look at the basics of writing a disassembler. Now writing a disassembler for a modern platform such as a modern Intel processor or AMD processor or even an ARM chip would be a huge undertaking because the instruction sets are just so gigantic. So to make things a little bit easier for the purposes of demonstration here, we are going to focus on a relatively simple platform by looking at the Intel 8080 microprocessor which was released in 1974 and it is pictured here courtesy of Wikipedia. Now the 8080 was an 8-bit microprocessor chip and it featured seven 8-bit general purpose registers which they named A, B, C, D, E, H, and L and it additionally had a 16-bit program counter or PC register and a 16-bit stack pointer or SP register. All the instructions are encoded using one single byte and it is a little Indian. Every operation can be followed by one or two bytes of data which can be either a memory address, a port number, or an operand. So a very simple uh, architecture. Now despite being so simple uh, you'll see that implementing every instruction here on camera would be kind of boring to watch and quite cumbersome. So instead I'm only going to implement the first few here. I should say implement the disassembly for each one here and uh, leave implementing the rest as sort of a exercise for you all. So now the other thing we're going to need other than this information, other two things. Number one, we need a good reference for our instruction set. And there are a lot out there for the Intel 8080. I personally used this one here. It is a fantastic one. I'll link it down in the description. But very simple table to use. So for example, 0x00 on the Intel 8080 is a NOP instruction, a no-op. 0x01 would be an LXI, 0x02 is STAX, etc, etc. And we'll implement just the first few of these and I'll leave the rest up to you. Now the other thing we're going to need is a, uh, uh, something to test on, a binary to test on. And you can find all kinds of binaries for the Intel 8080 out there, including ones that are specifically designed for testing like emulators. Uh, and this, by the way, would be a good starting point for an emulator. Uh, that could potentially be a future video. But I already got one, as you can see, I've got this file here called invaders.h, which is the Space Invaders realm. Now for legal reasons, I'm not going to distribute that here. It's very easy to find with the Google search. As I said, there's all sorts of realms out there to test on. It doesn't really matter too much for the disassembly. But you're going to want to have one so you can actually see this work. Now, as for implementation, I'm going to implement this in C because it's a nice lower level, but yet high level language. It's really well suited to this sort of task. And I am using Linux and going to be using the GNU compiler toolchain. But this code should run on Microsoft using Visual Studio or Mac using Xcode or the GNU compilers, whatever. We're going to do it all in a single file here because it's actually pretty simple. So I'm going to create a new file. I'll just call it disasm.c. And we're first going to start off by including the standard input output library headers and the standard library headers. We are actually going to implement our disassembler as just two functions. The obvious one is our main function, which every C program is of course going to have. And the other one is going to be called disassemble. And disassemble is going to take in our buffer of bytes, which we will be reading in from, the com from say, our ROM. And it's going to disassemble the instruction. And it's also going to take in the current program counter. This will make more sense in a minute. So let's go ahead and create a, a forward declaration for our disassemble instruction. It will return an int, which is going to correspond to the new program counter location. And we're going to call it disassemble. And as I said, it's going to take in a buffer of bytes, which will be an unsigned char star for our buffer. It's also going to take in the current program counter. And this is just our forward declaration. We're not implementing it here. And then, of course, we also need our standard uh, main function. So, you know, int argc, char argv, pretty standard stuff. So let's start off with some of the basic structure here. We're going to take in a file from the command line, which is going to be the file we are going to disassemble, which in this case is our invaders.h. That's what we are going to be testing on. 
So we need to implement a little bit of code to do that. So first of all, we're going to need a handle for the file, a file pointer. So let's set that up. And what we're going to tell it to do is we're just going to open the file at the path of our first program argument. And we need to read it as binary. And we should also throw in a little bit of error checking in here to make sure we actually have a good file handle. And we'll just print some kind of message like we couldn't open um, the path to the file. So just some basic error checking. And we'll just exit if that happens because we can't continue at that point. Uh, and then remaining, we'll have to read the file into memory. Then we'll have to perform the disassembly. And then we'll just do our standard return zero. Oops, if I can type. And then down here, we can also go ahead and put in the disassemble function. All right, so now we've got a little bit of basic code here to take in the first argument as our file path to the file we want to disassemble. And we've got a sort of skeleton for our disassembly function. Next thing we need to do is we need to actually read this file into a buffer in memory so we can work with it. So to do this, we first need to figure out the file size, which is pretty easy to do in C. We're first going to use fseek on the file to read all the way to the end of the file. And using that, what this will allow us to do is figure out the size of the file using ftel here. And then what we need to do is we need to rewind back to the beginning of the file so that we can actually read it into the buffer. So pretty simple, that gets us the size of the file. So next, we need a buffer to store the bytes of the file in, and it's going to be the size of that F size. So let's create our unsigned char buffer, and we're just going to malloc some memory for that, the size of F size. So this is giving us a place to store all the binary data, and then we are going to read the file into the buffer. So if you're familiar with C, this should be quite simple, quite straightforward. And then, of course, we need to close the file. Now, we can perform the disassembly. So, what we'll do is we'll go down here to where we want to perform our disassembly. And we first need to initialize a program counter. Now, of course, to begin with, the program counter starts at zero. It starts at the beginning of the program. And we're going to create a while loop, which is where we are going to go through and disassemble every instruction in the file. So, while our program counter is less than the size of the file. Oops, what we're going to do is we're going to increment the program counter by the amount returned by our disassemble instruction, or our disassemble function rather. We're going to pass that the buffer of bytes and the current program counter. And that's it. Our The real magic is going to be done by the disassemble function. All right, so hopefully this makes sense up, into, up to this point. If not, it should make a little more sense after we start actually implementing the disassembly instruction or the disassembly function. I keep saying instruction, I mean function. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do is we need to read an opcode from our buffer of bytes. And remember, each opcode is a single byte. So this is actually extremely easy. So we just create a pointer to our opcode and we get one byte from the location of our current program counter. That's our current opcode. We're gonna create this uh, variable called opbytes and set it to one. What this is for is this is gonna be used to track the number of bytes followed by our opcode. So recall that the, uh, each opcode can work on either one or two bytes. So this is gonna be used to track how much to increment the program counter by later. Again, this will make more sense once you see a couple instructions. Now what we're going to do is we're going to print out the current value of the program counter, which we want to be formatted as a hex number because nobody really wants to deal with binary all the time. We'll throw in a tab in there, I guess. Print out the current value of the program counter. And now the actual disassembly actually occurs within a giant switch statement. So we're just going to do a switch on that opcode. And we'll go ahead and create a default for the switch. And the default is that we encountered some instruction that we don't know what is, so unknown instruction. So what we'll do is we'll just print out, I don't know why that 
put that way over there. So what we'll do is we'll just print F, uh, unknown instruction, and then we'll print out what the instruction is in hex, and pass it the opcode that we don't know what is. And we'll break. Okay, so that's the sort of basic structure for our switch statement. At the end, we'll print in a new line, just to clean up the output, and we'll return op bytes. So by returning that op bytes, that's how much our program counter gets incremented up here. So if it's an op code that operated on one byte, it will get in incremented by one byte. If it operates on two bytes, it will get incremented by two bytes. Again, let's implement some instructions, and you'll hopefully see what I mean. Okay, so everything else we need to do is within this switch statement. This is actually the vast majority of the uh, underlying code for the disassembler in this case. The rest is just a sort of repetitive task of adding in instructions. So let's just start with the very first possible instruction, which would be 0x00. So we'll create a case for that inside our uh, switch statement. And let's go over here. 0x00 is an op statement on the 8080. So we'll print F that that is an op. And we'll break. Oops. All right, so I went ahead and typed out this next instruction here because for whatever reason, the pressure of typing out the format string here, I kept messing it up. So I just went ahead and did it. So 0x01, if we go to our handy chart over here, 0x01 is an LXI instruction. It uses the B register and has 16 bits of data or two bytes. So over here, we print out that it's an LXI on the B register and then the two bytes of data that's taking in, which would be the next two bytes from our uh, buffer. So we can just grab that from our opcode. And we need to increment our program counter by three in this case. One byte for the instruction, two bytes for the data. So that's what's going to allow our program counter to increment correctly back in our main loop. Again, moving on. So we would create a case for the next one, 0x02. Go over here, 0x02 is a stacks on the B register. So this one's pretty easy, print F, stacks on the B, break. Oops, break. And in this case, our out bytes is just one to account for the one byte instruction. There is no data or anything that we need to account for. Keep moving on, 0x03. And as we can see, it's an INX on the B. So this is another one, print F. INX B and you just keep going on and on and on and you would add in all of these instructions as you can see it would get to be pretty tedious but I think this makes it pretty clear so let's go ahead let's save our changes and let's go ahead and compile it so we'll use GCC we're just going to call it disasm and we want to do it on disasm.c Go ahead and compile it so I didn't make any syntactical errors. That's good. So let's go to dot slash disasm and we're going to pass in the invaders.h. And here you can see, so for any instruction it doesn't know, it's just printing out the unknown instruction that we uh, specified. This is the current value of the program counter. And as you can see, the instructions that we did implement program counter at this address is lxi b, and there's the data it's taking in. So as you can see, implementing a disassembler in practice really isn't all that hard. And this is a very good basis for building an emulator. To continue this for an emulator, what you would do is within your disassemble here, instead of printing out what the instruction is, you'd actually implement that instruction. So you'd implement the functionality and you could build an emulator in that way. And so in practice, or in theory anyway, it's pretty simple. Now in practice, it gets pretty tedious implementing this for all these instructions. As you can see, there are quite a few here. And if you wanted to do this for a modern platform, you would have a massive undertaking indeed. I mean, if you ever want to see just how massive, just go look up the Intel developer documentation. It's thousands and thousands of pages. It's ridiculous. But hopefully this gives you a little bit better understanding of how a disassembler works and implementing one of these can be a great 
uh, way to practice sort of how binary works and how just computers in general actually execute code. So I think it's a good uh, educational uh, undertaking to do. So hopefully you found this video interesting. If you did have any questions, anything like that, let me know in the description down below. I will also go and post my GitHub repository that's got a complete disassembler implemented, as well as the blog post I wrote for this for a while ago, and a link to this instruction set. But thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.